For those of you that don't want to buy the right angle adapter to uh, reprogram or adjust the settings on your VESC, um, you might have a lot of these types of cables lying around. This is a, a mini USB as opposed to the more commonly, uh, lately, micro USB. But I still have tons of these lying around and I don't want to wait for an adapter. I don't want to have to go buy one. So uh, my solution was to simply crack one of these open. I used a knife. You can see I've already scored the sides here and the other side. And then just use a screwdriver to kind of get in there. Again, really hard to do one-handed here. but take it apart and the other side's a little bit better so I'll, I'll open up that one here and let you see hopefully you'll be able to see this but uh, get in there that maybe that'll work all right okay. and you can just pull the guts of it out and then uh, typically this part uh, the, the, the wires are really flimsy you can just bend them up and you can get this in and around the, the VESC without even having to get in there uh, one word of caution is check the cable first before you start on it, make sure it works with the device. Uh, I'm recording this video with my GoPro, and so I checked this cable with my GoPro to make sure that it was recognized as a data device on the computer. So that way you have, um, you can be sure that the cable you're using isn't for charging only, and it has the appropriate wiring uh, and such for it. So anyway, just thought that might be helpful for some folks. So here's what this particular cable looks like uh, when I took it apart. This is the cable I was trying to use initially. It came apart a little bit easier, but it actually didn't work for data. So I think that might have been part of my problem. But uh, this is a little longer than I expected getting it in there. But nonetheless, this is the only part that matters right up here. As long as you don't uh, kink a cable or, or, or sever a cable, I mean, you can bend this other part. So my plan would be to basically bend this at more or less a right angle. So it'll go right on the VESC on the skateboard. Uh, and then I also have a USB extension cable, which I already tested with this cable to make sure that everything was compatible again with my GoPro. So should work okay uh, to program the VESC. We're gonna try that in a minute. But before I do that, I have another video to make uh, about the throttle. So uh, anyway, be posting that soon too. Bye. Hey guys, it is Brian again. Uh, using the BLDC tool here, I was able to get it connected to my board. Here's the cable I showed you earlier. You can see the slight little bend I put in that, which is plenty to get everything working. Um, and you can see that right now what we're looking at is a display of the remote. And I changed some of the settings in here. The um, Let me take a step back here. First thing was in the motor config, um, the settings that Jason recommended are right here. Uh, and so I put in the recommended values that, that he had put in everything there seems fine. Obviously here on the bench, that didn't make any difference at all. Uh, when I go to the app configuration, just to try and get a little bit more, uh, less full, you know, it's like either full gallop, it seems like, or uh, or very close to it. Uh, I would say, for me, it felt like I moved the stick forward and, and it was like a minimum of 50% power. I couldn't get a smaller amount. Um, so I tried the different ones here, the the duty cycle and the PID speed control. And, and the, the PID speed control is just downright awesome. If you want to just go slow and that's it, Oh man, this is this is the mode for you guys right there. But what I will say and why I don't like it is that you cannot coast in that mode. Um, if you release the the you know the, when the joystick's in the middle here, that's basically braking. So um, you can go forward, and then that's fine. It'll go forward at very very slow increments, very slow. It was, it was actually quite nice. Top speed would be very limited based on just my bench testing here. Um, but again, you let off this joystick and, and it's, it's breaking. You cannot push it, uh, unless you turn the battery off. So, uh, I got a message from another guy, uh, that was helping me, offered to, to help me program the tool. And, and, uh, based on what he had to say, uh, I played with these settings here a little bit. I turned on the display for the remote so I could see like where my dead band was and see if I pull the, this all the way back took note of the value and I programmed in just a slight lower value. I've been playing around with these right here and uh, the default settings were 0.15, 1, and 2. And I found I was able to get a lot better control with these. Your values might need to vary a little bit. Um, you might have to play around with it, but I wanted to show you 
Now look what happens when I use the remote here. So I'll push forward just a little bit. I have a little bit more of a dead band here than I had before, and you can still see that on the screen, I hope. But once I get to a point where it starts to go, it goes a lot slower, and I'm able to get a little bit better speed control out of it. So I haven't tested that, but I, again, there's a, when you put a load on it, it feels it's going to feel a lot slower than it looks here and i think that's going to be the magic ticket for me anyway and of course the cruise control still works in the other modes that i tried the cruise control uh, uh, again just bench testing didn't test this out in the field it's raining really badly here today um anyway it didn't really seem like it worked the way that i would want it to so i'm going to go with these settings here i'm going to try that uh and then uh see how that goes so hopefully this will help uh, some of you all uh, get your Raptor dialed in a little bit more how you'd like it. Anyway, have a good day. Bye.